Let's go earn that data manipulation core credential. Folks, we are halfway through, more than halfway if you count the foundational micro cert. We only have two tests left to go. We actually only have one real study section left to do, and that is continuing core topics. That's what we're going to do today. Kind of. We're going to do part of it today. So continuing core topics is tough. And there are five tools involved, of which four of them are pretty challenging. So we're going to split it in half. Now, we've got two more tests to go. We have the data manipulation test and we have the transformation test. These are the toughest of all the five tests that we're going to do. In order to do data manipulation, which if you're going in order, that's the, the second to last one. In order to do data manipulation, we need to master the find replace tool and the append fields to do tool. Now, I'm going to do another video tomorrow. Today is Wednesday. It is the 20th. So I am now woefully behind. But my objective is for the learners to master going forward, the learners to master find and replace and append fields on days 18 and 19. It's now the 20th of September. So I'm a day behind and I'm going to be two days behind by tomorrow when this actually posts. I'm going to do this video uh, tomorrow night. I think we're going to do a live stream with some of the people that are actually participating in the challenge. We will talk through the rest of continuing core topics. So that'll be live streamed tomorrow night, posted. The internet lives forever. Everybody can see it. So you don't have to be there live to join in the shenanigans. But what we're going to talk about today is mainly find and replace and append fields. I'm also trying to stay out of hot water with my wife and I have some other things that I got to do tonight. So sitting in here for an hour and mulling over all of these tools is probably not going to be healthy for my marriage. So we will talk about find replace. We will talk about append fields. This is actually lesson learned for me. This is actually where they teach you the data writing or the uh, data output tool. So if you took the test already and you struggled with that part a little, I'm sorry. I told you to take the... I think it was data prep where they asked you a bunch of questions about data output. Sorry about that. Um, so if you're doing this in the future and you're not adhering to the September timeframe, just know this is the part where we talk about writing data that is covered on the data preparation test, which is the one we just took. So we're kind of putting the cart before the horse. It's all right. You know, I make mistakes and I'm sort of building this plane as I fly it anyway. Okay. Let us take a look at what we're doing today. Here we go. We are on continuing core topics. I'm a little bit jacked up tonight. Wife and I just got done uh, taking a walk and then in the gym. And I was listening to some flow riding down there. Always get fired up. So yeah, I'm the, I'm the whitest of the white boys. You know it. So continuing core topics. And we are transforming our data set. Let's just get an assessment of what the time investment is going to be here right off the bat. So we got this video to watch. Not going to watch it with you. They say 25 minutes. Okay, so video. What's it called? Data and devices. Really? Okay. Data, devices, 25. Let's round that up to 30. Okay, 30 minutes for this video. You got it. What's next? Close that out. Okay. So we're just going to go down this left side here. We are not going to do practice exercise. And maybe we'll do practice exercise number four. We'll do look, uh, it says VLOOKUPs. Come on. We got to be better than that. Lookup functions or XLOOKUPs. If you're still doing VLOOKUPs, just stop. XLOOKUPs are better. All right. This tells me we designed this thing years ago. Anyway, lookup functions in designer using the find replace tool. Append fields using the append fields tool. I don't know why sometimes we name it after the tool and sometimes we give it a different button. Anyway, and we'll talk about writing data. Maybe we'll peek at the data stewardship video as well and see how long that takes. So we're going to V or <laughs> V lookups. Lookup functions. The find replace tools, a little magnifying glass and a pencil. So you're going looking for something and you're kind of writing over it. Find replace tool is tricky. I will not lie. I, I lived and died by this thing at Analect, my last job. Um, 
we had to um, we had to break out a bunch of concatenated codes in marketing analytics, and we had to validate all of the codes because they would just come in wrong all the time. And so we would use a ton of find and replace tools to put in these validation lists and say, you know, is this is this value right? Is it in the right position? Is it in the right column? Is it? It's kind of a nightmare. But anyway, find replace tool, interactive lesson. How long are we talking? Scrolly well on this mouse really stinks. Twelve minutes. So find replace twelve minutes video and the try it. Yeah, we don't actually want to watch the video. Let's do this. Let us try it. Find replace. Here we go. Now, I won't necessarily do all of these. I don't know how many there are. One, two, three, four, five of them. All right. Well, we'll try a couple. You use the find replace tool to achieve the target output. Let's go ahead and run the workflow. So I just downloaded these. All right, so we'll demo this. We've got one database with transaction ID, transaction date, and account holder. Second has word and replacement. All right, cool. And the word is and, co, cmpy, dept, inc. Where do we see that here? We see that here in account holder. Okay, so we got a bunch of abbreviations in account holder. Just look at the data and assess. We've got a bunch of abbreviations in account holder. You can see some of those that were there. I zoom it's still on. There it is. Ooh, come on now. You can see some of these abbreviations. You've got co, dept, compi, dept. Okay, so clearly we want to replace these with the actual words. So we're going to do a find replace. We're going to find this word in that field in the other database, and we're going to replace it with the actual word. We don't want the abbreviations anymore for whatever reason. And then the target will look like that. It will have actual words and not abbreviations. Cool, cool. The find replace tool is not going to be in your favorites uh, doctrinally, as the Brits say. So go ahead and put a star on it, and then it'll be in your favorites palette. I recommend it. It's one of those kind of, yeah, also um, kind of borderline favorites. Okay, so we've got two anchors here. We've got the F anchor and the R anchor. You can figure out what those stand for, or I can just tell you it's find and replace. So tricky configuration here. Here's what we need to do. For right now, let's not worry about any of this schmutz over here. Find within field. This is your main data set right here. What field do you want to replace things in? So you want to find something within what field? Then find value. What value? What, what field value in the replace, generally the smaller data set, what field value do you want to find in that main data set? Okay, so within the main data set, we want to find the abbreviation co within that company description or whatever the heck it is. And we want to find the value of that abbreviation. Now, to get that result, we want to replace that abbreviation with the actual word. So we want to replace the found text with the value replacement. So these are already pretty much configured properly. Find within field, yeah, it's account holder. All right, so find within the account holder field the value that's right here, word, this abbreviation. And we want to replace it with this replacement. So ampersand turns to and, all that good stuff. So really this first one is, is configured properly right off the bat. Let's go ahead and run it. Ba Bing. That noise always makes me happy. And then we can see, okay, co has become company, dept has become department. Everything's been replaced. Company, company, department, company. All right, so we're good. That one's done. Okay, it's going to get a little more complicated. Append a government flag to any account holder row that contains a government string. Before we even look at the data, we know we're appending something now. We're not replacing anything. So let's bring a find replace down and then let's look at the data. Attach them both so the little error goes away. Okay. So now we have pretty much the same data set here. Transaction ID, date, account holder, amount. When we want to append a government flag to any account holder row that contains a government string. 
what is a government stream? Anything that says treasury, revenue, or of transport, we want to attach a field, we want to attach, append the field government flag. So we're going to put a yes on it. All right. So find within field account holder, sure. Find value government string, and we don't want to replace it with that Y. We want to append it with the government flag. Run it. Ooh, do we have nothing but nulls? We do. What happened? Mm, I know what happened. We didn't make it case insensitive. So they tricked us. We fell for it. Government string is lowercase, and everything here is uppercase. So let's go case insensitive and run. And then the cool thing is you don't even have to look at your data. You can just look here in your messages, or you can look in your message log. So this is find replace 71. You can find here, find replace, where are you? 71. Find replace 71. Four records were found and 11 not found. So that means we actually found some values. All right. And then you look here, you've got 26.67% okay. That means you found that many rows and that matches the target. Cool. So that we learned how to append and how to do case insensitive. What's up next? More or less the same thing, except it's lowercase in the find data set now. Replace any shorthand words in account holder. So same thing we did at first and replace it with the full word. Okay. All right. Sounds like we need to do case insensitive and we're okay with those words coming in as capitals. Easy day. Find replace. So it's within account holder, find the word, replace with replacement, case insensitive. Let's see if that works. It seemed like they added any complexity to it. Output looks right. Yep. Okay. What is next? Replace any shorthand words in account holder. So same, same thing. Replace with the full word only when they exist at the beginning of the field. Now we've got to use these configuration options. Let's pull the refine replace down. All right. So we're finding with within field account holder, we're finding a value word and replacing them with the full word. Do we need to go case insensitive? That's lowercase. That's uppercase. So yes, we do. Case insensitive find. But then we need find at the beginning of the field, only when they exist at the beginning of the field. So our target, you can see only that one there changed company. And it looks like that's the only one. Let's see if that works. There we go. Same thing. Only that line six changed. All right. I think this is the last one. It is. Replace any shorthand words in the account holder. Same thing and replace with the full word at any part of the field and within any word. Okay. So let's find it. Within account holder, find value word, replace te found text with value, case insensitive. What do we, what's the tricky thing here? There's got to be something where co came up in any. Yeah, Colorado textile and varnish. So did we fall for that earlier? We might have. Yeah, we did. Okay. So this one up here needs to be match whole word only. Let's see if that fixes it. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So we got tricked with it earlier. The, the co matched in Colorado. So let's go up and fix sometimes way further down the line. You realize you made a mistake. Yep. Right there. Match whole word only right there. Same thing here. No, wait, did that? Yeah, company Lorado. That's not a thing. 
That one did too, match whole word only. And then this last one is the only one that should be not match whole word only. And that gets company Lorado. Okay, so we fixed it. Cool, hopefully you followed all of that. I'm moving quick because I want to get the next tool in as well. All right, so let's call that, let's call it 15 minutes for the uninitiated. I kind of burned through it. All right, so find replace is dump. What's next? Entonces. We've done our lookup functions. Append fields, let's do it. Now, append fields a little tricky too. Not quite as bad as find replace. Append fields is going to give you a Cartesian join or a cross join. So you're going to have two inputs again. You're going to have a main data set, which is going to be called the T, the target data set. You're going to have a supplemental data set or kind of something to be appended that is going to say S. It's going to come in the S anchor. It's going to be the source data set. Now, and a Cartesian join has a multiplicative effect. So as many rows as you have in the target set, as many rows as you append from the source, they're going to multiply. You can imagine that can get bad if you have two big data sets and it's not exactly what you intend. So there's a couple little stopgap measures in, in place that we'll take a look at. Tool mastery, that's going to be an article. Let's assess the damage. How long is it going to take you to read this? Go five minutes. Okay. So append fields, five minutes for tool mastery. Let's see how long the try it takes. Pivot over. Let's do it. Pen fields. Cross tab and transpose can be pretty tricky. Some people get really intimidated by them. There's no reason to be intimidated. One, two, three, only three. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Append is, is simple in function. It's, it can be challenging to understand. So let's figure it out. Append sum of sales to each segment. We have one, two, three, four, five segments. Sum of sales is one thing. Easy day. Now, pen fields is not going to be in your favorites. I suggest you don't put it there because it just doesn't get used all that often. At least I don't use it all that often. I don't really know too many people who do. Okay. It's kind of a niche function. What you're going to see in a pen fields is you are going to see the jolly old select interface right there. So you can select, deselect, you can uh, change data types, you can reorder, you can rename, you can put in the description, you can change the size, basic select stuff. You can see that you have two fields from the target and one field from the source. So you can choose to deselect any of them and not carry them forward. We're going to keep them all. We just want to append sum of sales to each segment. So it's going to be a multiplicative effect. Five times one equals five. And we wind up with five rows just like the target. Super simple. Let's proceed. Oof, now we're getting crazy. Create a combination of each article of clothing, color, and size. So we have six articles of clothing. We have seven sizes. It's going to get big. And we have seven colors. Now we got to do it. We got to double it up. Pen fields, one times two. Doesn't matter which one's the target, which one's the source here. And then well, let's just do another one. We just multiply. I got chills. They're multiplying. Six times seven is 42. Times seven is 284. Should have 294 votes. I think. There it is, 294, target says 294. Easy day. All right. Okay, I lied. Pen fields is really easy. All right. Create a combination of each article of clothing, color, and size, again, but with more data. Six articles of clothing, seven sizes, 17 colors. I don't see the difference, but okay. Bang, bang. I'm not going to try and multiply that in my head. I don't, don't feel like it. We can just check the target. 714. I predict it's going to be 714 reps. Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I know. 
All right, so this is the stopgap measure, and I should know better because this comes up in one of my classes. It's in there deliberately as kind of a mine to, to trip you up. This says error on appends of more than 16 records. This is to keep you from making that massive Cartesian join where you accidentally append fields a million rows by another million rows, creating what, like a Googleplex, and you're just, you burn your computer to the ground. So we're gonna allow all appends on this configuration option here and run it. It should give us 714 and it does, 714. That's the number of home runs that Babe Ruth hit, was the record until Hank Aaron broke it. I know. Okay, what's next? Penn Fields is done, let's close it out. Nope, don't need to save that. Oh, come on now, don't do that to me. Penfields, you are finished. Let's go to writing data. And then tomorrow we'll be able to do transpose cross tab and the practice exercise. Actually, tomorrow we might do, because it's a live stream, we might do a weekly challenge. But output data tool, interactive lesson, how long? Interactive lesson is five minutes. How long did it take us to do Penfields? 10 minutes? I agree. Output five minutes. Okay. And let's do the try it exercise. Output data. This one's going to get interesting because there's some weird stuff you can do with output data. We got three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Start out super easy. Output to a CSV called my county data. Output data. We're reading in from a CSV, we're setting it out to a CSV. So let's set up a connection. Doesn't matter where it is. Select file. Um, let's go to, I'll just go to desktop. And we'll name the file. My county. Hey, I really should get another keyboard for up here. Save it. Ooh, did we save it in CSV? We didn't. Alter database. Silly boy. Don't do that. CSV. That's what they want. <laughs> Missed it. There we go. Okay. So let's run it. Come on. There we go. All right, as we go, it's probably best. Oh, CSVs are so annoying. So annoying. I'll put everything into a container after this. How many rows are these? Oh, it's 38,000 records. That's why. <laughs> probably should check that. Why are we writing to Excel workbooks? No, stop. Oh, the solutions. Idiot. <laughs> All right. Before you start, turn off the solutions container. That's insanely dumb. I don't know why they did that, but. All right. And we've got to, seriously? Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's pull all of these out. It's all the same CSV. Why would they do that? Why, God, why? Okay. You can just pull all of these out and just delete them. I get it for simplicity, but dang, why? Just delete them. Just, you only need one. You're reading the same file over and over, people. You only need one. Okay. Man, that was so dumb. I wish I could just wipe all this off of here. Why did we do that? Anyway, 
Okay, so this one here, we wrote to a CSV. Go ahead and click that hyperlink. It's gonna bring up the native application. CSV defaults to Excel. CSV is not an Excel file, but, oh, come on, don't make a liar out of me. Open the dang thing. Okay, well, while we're working on that, output to an Excel workbook called counties, name the sheet, sheet one. You must successfully run this workflow twice for it to count. Neat. Why did I pull that? I'm done. So is that going crazy on me now? Okay, output data, CSV. So you can just use one. Create it in. All right, set up a connection. Select file. Just go to desktop again. Excel SX. What do we want to call it? Counties. File name is counties. Okay, here. Finally got our CSV file up. So see, we output stuff to the CSV. Done. My county data is what it's called. All right. Yeah, it popped up on my, I was like, why am I not seeing myself on my StreamYard screen? CSV came up. Okay, counties. And when you go to save as an Excel workbook, it's going to ask you what sheet you want. We want sheet one. Okay. Okay, so it wants us to run it twice. Create new sheet. Okay, I need to put that. <laughs> the other outputs into a container as well. Turned off. All right. You come out here. You're going into a container. You're going into timeout. It's turned off. I'm going to turn on the, off the lights and time out. That's how mean I am. All right. So Excel workbook, sheet one, it wrote it. Let's go ahead and click that, pull up the native file application. Oh, look at that. It's coming up on the monitor. That's neat. Eventually. All right. I'm scooting you over here. I'll bring you up in a second. But it does. It, okay. Now it says it wants us to run it twice. Let's run it twice. Run, and it says no because because I've already got it open. Of course, but it's not really open. It's still opening. Cancel, cancel, cancel. I'm trying really hard to cancel this. Okay, whatever. We're not opening any more native file applications. I trust that you understand that that's what's going to happen. Okay. Go go bother me. Output to an Excel workbook called, did that ever come up? Yeah, it did. Okay, look, counties, Excel workbook, sheet one, it worked. All right, now let's run it for the second time now that we don't have it open. That only will hurt you with Excel workbooks. Okay, and now they want you to see that it won't create another one because the sheet already exists. So your configuration is that you're creating a new sheet and you can't because sheet one is already there. So you've either got to rename the sheet or you've got to pick one of these other options, append, overwrite. So let's go ahead and overwrite the sheet. And now it works. So we've changed that configuration option. Now it overwrites the sheet every time. Okay, but the default will only create it once in the Excel workbook. All right, you're in timeout, go away. Output. You, you get out of the way too. Let's just save ourselves some screen here. Output called counties to name the sheet, sheet one by default. However, create a batch output that generates a new tab for each county. I don't need your hint. I know how to do it. Okay, so let's go to an output data file. Yeah, all of these questions are on that data prep test. Sorry if you struggled with that. It's a 65% cut line. So you really could butcher a lot of questions and still pass. All right, so we're gonna set up a connection. We're gonna go Excel workbook, call it counties two. I never stopped my workout, silly boy. Counties two, let's save that. Sheet one, okay. We wanna create a batch output, creates a new tab for each county. So we're gonna take the file name, file or table name from field. That's down here at the bottom of the configurations. 
take the filer table name from the field. You want to append the suffix or you want to rewrite the whole thing is basically what it's saying. So take the file name, table name from the field. You want to change the entire, change the file or table name to, what is it? County. Um, hmm. Creates a new tab for each county. I don't see a county field there. It's a county. Oh, agency. Okay, whatever. Okay, so we want a file name or part of file name from agency. Um, and let's go ahead and overwrite the sheet because we got to run it twice and it'll error on the second time. So we're generating. We're generating this one I actually will bring up, but you can see in the message log, you're good. Okay. These many records written to El Dorado, Fresno, Glen, Humboldt, Imperial. Oh, Jesus, this is California counties. I'm going to be here all dang day. No wonder this thing was taking forever. How many counties are in California? Matt Braddon, how many counties in California? A lot, clearly. 59%, 65%. Okay. So you see it's going to work. What it's going to do is going to produce a tab for every county in California. And I don't feel like watching that. So it's done, we succeeded. I don't need to run it a second time. I set it to overwrite, it'll work. You get out of here as well. What is next? Oof. Outbook called counties to, we're just, I'm just deleting these. Boy, go for it. All right. Output to an Excel workbook called counties to. Name the sheet, sheet one by default, however, Create a batch output that generates a new tab for each county. Change file name. Okay, we just did that. Remove the county data so it is not contained within the data of the sheets, but remains on the tab names. Okay. Weird. I might have to check the solution on this one. I'm not even sure what they're wanting us to do. All right, set up a connection. What do they want us to call it? Counties 2 again? Interesting. I'm going to call mine counties three. Okay. Sheet one by default. Create a batch output. Take file or table name from field that generates a new tab for each county. Change file or table name. Oh, we don't want to keep the field in the output. Got it. All right. So there's no point in having a tab that says Alameda County. When every row in your data says Alameda County, Alameda County, Alameda County, you can take that out because it's implied. So remove the county data so it's not contained within the data of the sheets, but remains on the tab names. So agency is the county. Don't keep field in output. It's going to wind up the same way as the other one. It's just going to have one less field. All right, good, done, delete it. What's next? Let me get these. There's three more. Okay. I'll put to a CSV called my county data, but make sure the path, <laughs> make the path relative. Okay. A couple different ways to do this. So you want to set up a connection, select a file. Go to desktop. Actually, no, let's go to, where. where is this saved? Cancel this. Where is this saved? Is this still in downloads? It's still in downloads. Okay, let's put this in downloads. Set up a connection, select file. Let's go to, Downloads, output, try it, externals. It's, what does it want? CSV, CSV called my county data. Save it. All right, so we want a relative file path. 
you know, options. Now you could just type in a relative file path. I don't want to do that. Go in user settings. I'm trying to remember where this is. Data connection manager settings. No, advanced. Relative localization, customization. Where is it? Flow. Is it advanced settings? Now I feel like I should have done the silly class. Workflow dependencies. There we go. Okay, so you can change all your file dependencies to, to absolute. You can change all of them to relative. Okay. And then go ahead and look. Bing, bang, boom. It's a relative file path. All right. I don't, I'm sure there's a better way to do that. I don't know what it is, but let's run it. Make sure it outputs. It's me. Okay. And sure enough, it, it output it to here. It shows the absolute file path on the tool. It shows a relative file path. Same place, just different way to describe it. Done deal. Read in and write out to 2013 counties CSV immediately. Spoiler alert, you might need a block until done tool to get this to work. Yeah, no kidding. Um, okay, so this is what I like to call the Aldrich infinity loop. Um, <laughs> you, you don't ever want to do this. This is a really bad idea. But I guess we're writing the same file back into it, so whatever. Okay, the only way you can break your workflow in Alteryx is to write over your input data. Just don't do it. It's just a really terrible idea. Okay, I'm not, I haven't used the block until done in forever, and I remember them being a bit tricky. Okay. Alrighty, let's, um, let's see what happens. So set up a connection. We're going to go into... Select file. No, that ain't it. Where's the? Nope. All right, so CSV, right? Where's counties? 2013 counties. There it is. Yes. All right. Let's see if it works. A one anchor of the block until done. Yep. Okay. So we're good. We just overwrite our source data, but we overwrote it with the same exact data. So block until done just keeps, basically block until done is a dam. It's a, yeah, it's a dam. So you figure like a river flowing downstream, the dam is going to then hold the water and keep anything from flowing downstream until it can release it in a controlled manner. Block until done will take in all the data. Instead of the data kind of flowing uniformly through the workflow, it's going to flow to the block until done and then it's going to stop until all of the data is there and then the block until done is going to get it to go. What that prevents is if the first trons of data start going into that output data while they're still trickling out of the input CSV, which is the same file, it's going to kick an error and the workflow is going to stop. But if you allow all of the water data to come out of the, CSV, the source CSV, hit that block until done dam, and then the dam opens up and all the water flows back into the source file that it started from, then it, it doesn't error out. Okay. Clear as mud. Good times. What else? Last one. Already 38 minutes. See, it's a good thing I split this in half. Output to a CSV and create a file for each county with the county name as the file name. Warning, ensure this is pointed to a location you are comfortable landing 50 plus files. We're not actually going to execute it because I don't care to, to output 50 plus files because I don't want to sit here for another five minutes while this goes out. But all right, set up a connection. I'll select file, just put it on the desktop. Create a file for each county. So let's just call it County four, county is four, whatever. Save it. Take file name from each field. Change entire file path. Okay. 
and we're gonna do an agency. So we'll start it and then I'll just stop it midstream. I think that's right. Let's see. Oh, we did output it. Okay. Well, CSVs are more or less quick. All right, so let's just open, or let's look at the circus on my desktop. Yeah, did it not go to desktop? Hmm. Weird. Where did that output go? Oh, downloads. Okay. So let's open the downloads folder. Called it County Four. Yeah, there we go. Show all fifty six Yuba County, Yolo County, Ventura County. All right, show all fifty six. So we got them all. Doesn't look like all of them came out as a CSV. Let's pick one. It just says file. It's disconcerting. Some of them were CSVs. Huh. That's weird. Nope, they all just came out as blank files. What did they go out as? Alteryx databases? Okay, let me look at the solution on this one. What was the last config? What were we missing? Didn't do a wildcard or anything. Set up a connection, CSV. Take file or table name from field. Change file or table name. Okay. Agency, keep field and output. Doesn't seem like that would do it. Let's see if it creates a different. Oh, come on. Just get out. Where's the destination for this? Externals. All right. Go ahead and run it. All those being put out to downloads, that goes into externals. See, those are all going out of CSVs. Okay. So what was it different? Not change entire file path, change file or table name. Oh, okay, because it's a CSV, I get it. Because it's a CSV, if you put it into an Excel workbook, change file or table name is going to change the table name. So it's going to make it a tab. So you wind up getting a 50 tab, a 56 tab uh, Excel workbook. If it, if it's a CSV, then it's a, it's a flat file. So when you change the file or table name, it's the file name. It generates a file. Okay. And I set it to replace the entire file path, which means it goes out as a blank uh, file. Neato. Okay, go ahead and delete that out of downloads for show. All right, output's done. Cool. So what do we do today? Let's call output. What do you say for output? 20 minutes? Say 20 minutes. Okay, so output data tool, a little bit of a struggle, but we got through it. What do we got to do left? Changing data layouts. We had to learn how to pivot. All right. You thought you knew how to pivot in Excel. That's cool. You don't know how to pivot in Alteryx. Totally different. So if we stop creaking here, transpose and cross tab are what we're going to work on. So just remember, you're going from wide data to tall data. You're going from tall data to wide data. It's only a matter of where the T is. If you stand up, wide data makes a T, right? Standing up, arms out, makes a T. So T transpose, you're starting out with wide data. Cross tab, you're ending with wide data. That's how I remember it. 
All right. So transpose and cross tab, they're, they're a little challenging to understand. I think I have a way to explain it that people tend to remember it, but we shall see. So we'll get to that tomorrow night. That is what we'll do next time. So what do we do today? We learned find replace, append fields. Let me shut the screen off so I don't forget again. We learned find replace, we learned append fields, and we learned output data. We are now ready to take the data manipulation test. We've got all the tools. We only needed append fields and find replace. So maybe tomorrow we'll just do the study session for that, and then I'll save the work for transpose and cross tab for the next day. That might be a good idea. Okay, so how much work have we done today? 30 minutes on the video, call it 27 minutes on find replace, 15 minutes on append fields. So that's what, 47 for an hour and two, let's call it an hour and a half with the, with the output data. So that's, we'll call that two days worth of work because we can round up a little bit. You may struggle a little bit more with some of those. So that's two days. We were at day 17 was the last day we had as far as testing and whatnot. So that's days 18 and 19. And I'll publish that this video tomorrow. So 18 and 19 are going to be find, replace, append fields, and output data. Day 20, we'll study for and do the, uh, the data manipulation test because I think we're ready. Maybe we'll do the practice exercise tomorrow, and I'll talk about the test. And then we can wrap up uh, a day or two later, we can wrap up transpose and cross tab. And those are the last tools we need. And then all we've got to do is design our core prep. They've got a list of weekly challenges for us. We'll do one or two more of those. The prep guide and get certified. We will have one test left. Now, those of you that want to take the whole core test all in one swing. Awesome. You're, you're set up and we've got a week to go. So if you punt it, you got a week to, to make it up if you only got 30 days. Um, hopefully you're leaning forward. You're getting a little bit ahead of the game if you only got the 30-day trial license. But I think this is doable. I really do. All right. So that is what we did. That is what we'll do next time. What is our next test? Data manipulation. We'll try and get to that tomorrow. Folks, subscribe to the channel. Please like this video. Leave me a couple of comments. If you've got questions, uh, whines, gripes, complaints, suggestions, go ahead and let me know. We talked today about the next challenge, potentially, since we're you know, two thirds of the way through this one. Potential next challenge is either going to be Tableau or Power BI. I'm not sure. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm, I'm not sure how much I want to bite off with Power BI. I've never used it. And so part of me says, like, I really want to rise to the challenge and, and try for certification in 30 days. I don't know if that's sustainable for most people. So I'm still chewing on that. I, I want to keep these manageable and approachable for people. But that is what we're going to do next. Like, subscribe, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, whatever, notifications, the bell, ring the bell, all of that stuff. And with that, all we got left to say is, folks, follow me and I'll make you a genuine Alteryx hero just like me.